Welcome everyone to our training on Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams. This is a four part training series covering the upgrade from Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams. My name is Brian Nice. I am a principal program manager within our Teams engineering, customer and partner team. Before we dive in, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Some additional resources include additional modules that can be found at aka.ms forward slash Teams Academy. Additionally, we're looking for two types of feedback. For feedback on this session, you can go to aka.ms forward slash Teams community, create a new post, and add the IT Pro training tag. This will allow us to easily find your feedback for this session. If you're looking to provide feedback for various features of the Teams product itself, you can go to aka.ms forward slash Teams feedback. Keep in mind that Teams and Office 365 evolve constantly, so you should stay up to date on our blog at aka.ms forward slash teams blog. The slide also indicates the current version of this presentation. The overall agenda for this training will be covering five areas. First, we'll cover Microsoft Teams, the intro to upgrade. We'll then talk about what the Teams only experience is when we look at the Microsoft Teams client. From there, we'll talk about how we plan the paths to Microsoft Teams. We'll then take a little deep dive into managing coexistence and interoperability. And finally, we'll finish with configuring the upgrade from the admin point of view. This training will be broken into four separate trainings. You are currently in part one, introduction to upgrade and the team's experience. This training will be covering the first two agenda items that you see here, Microsoft Teams, intro to upgrade, as well as our team's only experience. The remaining agenda items will be covered in subsequent trainings. As we go through this training, there are some key learnings to pick up. First of which is Teams is in fact the hub for teamwork within Office 365. We also wanna think from an upgrade perspective that Teams itself is more than just simply a technical migration. There is a people change element that we cannot lose sight of as part of this overall upgrade process. When we talk about Teams only mode, this refers to the experience of a user that has been upgraded from Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams. Meetings are always joined with their respective clients, meaning that Teams meetings will be joined by a Teams client and Skype for Business meetings will be joined by a Skype for Business client. Let's dive into our first section on Microsoft Teams, an intro to upgrade. Microsoft Teams has the power to transform the way users get things done, acting as a hub for teamwork within our Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Now, Teams is not a direct one-to-one -one replacement for Skype for Business per se, but it helps us to extend the capabilities that Skype for Business would provide. This enables people to be able to connect, communicate, and collaborate from within this singular interface, thereby streamlining the way users work. As you can see throughout the slide here, there's many facets that are familiar for folks that utilize Skype for Business, such as chat and calling, managing our contacts, hosting meetings, uh, but we also have the capability of extending the hub for teamwork environment to include collaboration on various documents, whether that's through say OneNote or Microsoft Word, uh, to be able to manage our projects and work groups, perhaps with something like Planner, as well as being able to integrate with various third-party applications as well. Now, in the context of the upgrade to Microsoft Teams, we must make sure that we realize that Teams is much more than a technical migration. The people aspect of it is critically important because people themselves don't automatically change. We don't just simply adapt to change uh, very rapidly because resistance is a normal human behavior and it takes time to develop deep habitual usage of a particular application or platform. Now, on top of that, shadow IT is more prominent than ever. And 80% admit to using their own particular communication tool of choice, meaning they might choose to use Teams or perhaps they choose to use some other application simply because that is the ease of use or the most prominent application that they have available. Uh, and they don't have a particular standardized approach uh, to communications within their environment. We also need to realize that people and change are really not a one size fits all type approach, right? We have folks inside of organizations that are innovators. 
that will jump at the latest and greatest things and be able to uh, thrive in those types of environments. We have others that are more on the laggard side of things where they're kind of ingrained in the tools that they use today and maybe they're just stuck in email and that's what they use and they're not looking to uh, make any type of change. And then of course you have everyone in between. So we have to make sure that we don't just simply throw a lot of technical stuff at them without understanding that there's a varying uh, degree of folks that are there to use this particular platform. Technical readiness and user readiness will go hand in hand. So as we are looking at this migration and looking at this upgrade, we need to ensure that our planning our pilot process, our deployment process, have all of these readiness activities tied together, both from the technical perspective, as well as from the end user perspective. Ensuring that we have a focused effort can help drive sustained success. The slide here is showing some of the common attributes that we see across some of our most successful customers. Having a sponsorship coalition is critically important, that executive sponsor level, to ensure that we are able to drive the change that is necessary uh, from the top down. Ensuring that we have an optimized technical environment is critically important. We want to ensure that our environment is ready for teams. From a user perspective, as we've talked about on the last slide, it's not just about the technology, but it's also about the people. Well, the people need to understand what's in it for them. Right? What are the articulated user benefits that they can see? And piling onto that, what are some of the explicit use cases that our end users can see so they can understand exactly how to apply this in their daily routines? This all leads to, of course, having a very focused adoption strategy to ensure that we maintain our view of that people change aspect. You may also involve yourselves with what we call a peer champion program, where you have designated champions within the organization uh, that are your go-to uh, folks for this particular initiative. Devices are critically important as well, especially as we start getting into the communications aspects of uh, a solution like Microsoft Teams, making sure that they understand and we understand how the users are using devices today. Are they using handsets? Are they using headsets and so forth? And of course, how do we operationalize all of this? We need to have a clear operational strategy to ensure that we can continue to maintain the service as it's being rolled out throughout the organization. So why should you upgrade to Microsoft Teams? And more importantly, why you should actively consider upgrading to Microsoft Teams now? Well, first and foremost, some of the features and capabilities that we have built into Microsoft Teams. There's a number of innovations that we've made within Teams above and beyond what we were capable of doing in the Skype for Business online space. Uh, for example, as we look at our meetings platform, uh, being able to uh, do solutions like having our background blur or being able to do uh, real-time translation and transcription, right? These are all features and capabilities that uh, are an evolution of what we had available to us in the Skype for Business world. We also continue to evolve this intelligent communications roadmap and continue to innovate in this uh, cloud-based solution. From a user perspective, it's a more modern, more rich experience, opening up the ability for them to collaborate on multiple levels, whether it's chat, whether it's voice and video, uh, whether it's collaboration on documents, whether it's utilizing third-party applications, right? We have all of these at our fingertips from a user experience perspective, and we have the ability to have this cross-platform, whether we're on our PC, whether we're on our Mac, whether we're on our mobile device. Right. All of this exposing us to this ability to not only do the things that we were able to do before in Skype for Business, like chat, calling, and uh, meetings, but also being able to take advantage of the collaboration aspects, right? the team concept, being able to have the breakdowns of channels, uh, and being able to focus our attention on a particular uh, collaboration effort, whether that be a project or whether that be an organizational group or something of that nature. And from an operational performance perspective, Teams was built on a modern infrastructure for the cloud, right? In the Skype for Business world, we kind of took what we learned and knew from the Skype for Business on-premises environment and adapted that to the cloud, uh, which was a more monolithic type platform. But Teams is built on a modern infrastructure inside of Azure. It's built to scale uh, to a, a cloud-based uh, environment. And Teams itself helps to provide improvements in the quality and the operational metrics over Skype for Business based on how we've architected uh, and deployed the solution. 
So where do we start? I'm on Skype for Business today. Where, where do I even begin? I, I want to get to Teams, great, but, but where do I start? You know, a great place to start, we show over here. Well, have you even started using Teams yet? Right? Maybe you've heard about the announcements that we've made or you've seen some blog posts, what have you, and you've just started to realize that, hey, this Teams thing looks pretty cool, but we haven't even started working on that yet. If you haven't started using Teams, you should begin by envisioning what does teamwork look like for your organization? Once we get a better understanding of how your organization can leverage teamwork, then you can move through the process of piloting teams, deploying out teams, adopting teams, and so forth. As you notice in this particular flow, for organizations that have not even started using teams, we're not beginning the discussion with upgrade to teams. Well, no, because upgrading to teams is something that we can discuss after we already understand that end destination, right? If the organization doesn't understand how to envision teamwork or how to even use teams, it's gonna be very difficult to lead with upgrading to teams. Uh, and if you do, you typically end up in scenarios where it becomes the one-to-one -one or the ever popular parity type conversation that we try to avoid uh, because Teams is not Skype for Business, it's an evolution. Now, if you have started using Teams, as you see on the flowchart here, well then of course you can start looking at how you plan your upgrade to Teams because you've already started to utilize Teams in your environment. Now, throughout all these phases, as you see on the right here, there is going to be a period of coexistence between Skype for Business and Teams. And we'll deep dive into that in one of our later trainings to tell you more about how these two uh, platforms coexist together. The end state is the box that we see at the bottom here, which is our upgrade to Teams only. That's where we have transitioned to all of our users and upgraded all of our users from Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams. So what is an upgrade, right? We refer to it as the Teams only experience, but what does that really mean? What does that really look like? The definition of upgrade in this training is to utilize Teams for all of the various modalities that Teams can provide. This includes chat, calling, meetings, collaboration, basically everything that the Teams client is capable of providing means that you have been successfully upgraded when you're using Teams for that. This is referred to as a specific configuration or a coexistence mode that we call Teams only. Now you can see on the left hand side here a screenshot of the Teams client showing you all of the various features and functions that are available with inside of Teams. On the right hand side, we kind of break things down a little bit uh, more detail so that we can see if I am an upgraded user, meaning I am utilizing a Teams only, my chat and my calling, everything will be received and initiated from my Teams client. I would have the capability of being able to chat or call a previous Skype for Business user if necessary. We call that interoperability, right? And I'll talk more about that in our later trainings. Um, and I will be redirected to Teams if I launch my Skype for Business client. The idea here is as I've been upgraded, everything is directed to Teams in this instance. Now, from a meetings perspective, we specifically are referring to the ability to schedule meetings and when I am a Teams only user, all new meetings that I schedule will be in Microsoft Teams. I can still join Skype for Business meetings, no problem. I'll use my Skype client for that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But all new meetings that I create will always be in Teams. Data will be migrated for you as part of the upgrade process. So the contacts that you had, your buddy list, if you will, that you had in Skype for Business, including your federated contacts, will be upgraded and migrated into your Teams client. If you are migrating from on-premises Skype for Business server, we will plan to migrate your meetings as part of this process as well. Now, this is just a high level breakdown of what upgrade is. We're gonna dive deep into this as we go throughout the subsequent trainings. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when you are upgraded to Teams, you are in Teams only mode, but your Skype for Business client is actually still present on your machine. We don't actually remove the binaries or the bits from a machine when a user is placed into Teams only mode. However, we do 
take the Skype for Business client and optimize it into what we call a meetings only client configuration. Screenshot that you see here, this is the welcome screen of a user that has launched their Skype for Business client and they have been upgraded to Microsoft Teams. So they get a notification that lets us know that the organization is now using Microsoft Teams. And then they get a couple of buttons that you see at the bottom here. Of course, we have the go to Teams button, which will of course launch them into the Teams application, but they also have the start Skype for Business button. This start Skype for Business button will actually launch the client reduced mode or an optimized mode for meetings only. So you can see here, as I'm in the client, I see my calendar. So I'll be able to see all meetings that are available to me, whether they're Skype for Business meetings, as we see here, or whether it's a Microsoft Teams meeting. I'll have one click join from here and be able to join the Skype meeting or join the Teams meeting. I'll also have the capability of clicking into my recent conversation here and be able to see the conversation history from my existing meetings, as well as any previous conversations that I may have had in my Skype for Business client. This is a specially adapted client specifically for the purposes of joining meetings, because as we mentioned earlier, when we are upgraded into Teams only mode, we will be able to create new meetings as Teams meetings, but when you join Skype for Business meetings, they're always joined with the Skype for Business client. A recap of the meeting scenarios that we discussed earlier. The meeting client must match the service that hosts the meeting. So for example, if it was a Skype for Business meeting, you will use a Skype for Business client to join that meeting. Likewise, if it's a Teams meeting, you will use a Teams client to join that meeting. Now, please note when we use the term client, this is indicative of all the various types of clients that are available for the particular application. So that could be a desktop client, for example, your PC or your Mac. It could be a mobile client such as iOS or Android. It could be the browser, Edge and Chrome, if you're using Teams, or it could be the Skype meeting app in the browser if you're using uh, Skype for Business. So when we say client, we basically mean any of those types of clients. Regardless of where the user is in their upgrade path, the users can always use either meeting client, whether they've been upgraded or not, right? So the Skype for Business user can always join a Teams meeting with the Teams client. Likewise, a Teams user can always join a Skype for Business meeting with the corresponding Skype for Business client. This is regardless of what coexistence mode has been assigned to the user. Let's take a closer look at the user experiences. If we take a look at the Skype for Business client and what happens to this client during the upgrade experience, you'll see on the left-hand side here, this is our starting point. This is what we call our no upgrade state, right? Or essentially a state where the user is just simply utilizing their Skype for Business client as they do today. We have the capability through our administrative tools to be able to turn on a notification to the user, giving them a little bit of a heads up that the upgrade is coming. That's the middle screenshot that you see here, which is indicative of this banner that indicates Skype for Business will be upgraded to Microsoft Teams. When this notification is turned on, obviously the purple banner lights up for the end user, but it also exposes a try it button. In the background, we're actually downloading the Teams application and getting it installed on their machines such that if they do click the try it button, they'll actually have a Teams application to use. The screenshot that you see on the right should look familiar. This is the screenshot that we show for a user when they launch their Skype for Business client after they have been successfully upgraded to Teams. In this instance, again, as we noted, we're showing you from a splash screen perspective that you have been upgraded to Teams, giving them a one-click option to get to the Teams application, but also giving them the start, start Skype for Business option uh, that will allow them to open the optimized meetings mode client uh, for Skype for Business. Now, in this stage, also, the Outlook meeting add-in will be removed from a Skype perspective and replaced with the Teams meeting add-in and the integrations with Office, that is the presence bubbles that we see with inside of Outlook, for example, uh, and the ability to hover over a contact and start a chat, those will be replaced with Teams. 
Let's take a deeper look at the Windows desktop. When we have a user that is in the Teams only experience and they launch their Skype for Business client, we will see the splash screen that you see on the left-hand side here, indicating that our org is now using Teams. This meetings only or optimized version of the Skype for Business client basically focuses the user specifically on their meetings. So if I tap on this little meetings uh, pivot here, I'll be able to see all of my meetings that are available, both Skype for Business and Teams, and be able to perform my one-click join as necessary from this particular view. Additionally, if I were to click on the tab for conversation history, I will be able to see all of my conversation history here. This not only includes my meeting conversation history, but it would also include any chat conversation history that I had prior to being upgraded to Microsoft Teams. When we look at this on the Mac, it's a very, very similar experience to what we saw on the PC. Again, on the left-hand side, we have our screen that lets us know that we are utilizing Teams with the option to launch either the Teams application or the optimized Skype for Business client. Middle section shows us, as we look into our Meetings tab, the meetings that are available on our calendar. Again, either Skype for Business and or Teams will show up here, allowing the user to continue to do their one-click join from this particular screen. And they will have the option of clicking on the chat app that you see here, again, to be able to see any previous conversation history, whether that's uh, previous conversation history in their Skype client prior to them being upgraded, or this is where the meeting chat would show up as well for users that continue to join legacy Skype for Business meetings. Speaking of the meeting join experience, what happens when I join a Skype for Business meeting but I'm in my Teams client. So take a look here on the left-hand side. This is my Teams application. I'm looking at my calendar for the day, and I see there happens to be a meeting for me to join. In this case, I simply click the Join button, not really paying too much attention to you know, what type of meeting this is. I'm just conditioned to see, hey, it's a meeting, and I join it. But if you actually look a little bit further down the body, you see that this is a Skype for Business meeting. Well, when I click the Join button here, Remember that the meeting type is the meeting client that you'll use. So even though I'm in my Teams application here, this is a Skype for Business meeting, such that when I join it, I will join it utilizing the Skype for Business full client. This is assuming that the user actually has the Skype for Business client installed on their machine. They will join it through the full desktop application. If they don't have the full application installed, they'll be re redirected out to the web where they can download the Skype Meetings app and use the Skype Meetings app version. Now, why would you want to use one over the other? Well, there are some features that are available in the full desktop client, such as client-side recording, for example, that are not currently available uh, in the Skype Meeting app. So that might be why you may want users to use that uh, full Skype for Business client that is in the optimized meeting mode. The experience of joining a Skype for Business meeting for a Teams only user from Outlook is very similar to what we saw joining the meeting from the Teams client. In this example, I'm showing the particular meeting details from without in Outlook, but this could also be from the reminder dialog that were to pop up uh, from Outlook's perspective as well. And here you see I have the hyperlink to join the Skype meeting. Well, as I click that, again, even though this user is upgraded to Teams, this is a Skype meeting, thus it must be joined with a Skype client. They'll be directed to use their full client if it is installed on their machine. And again, that's the optimized uh, meetings mode version of the client. Or if the application's not present, we'll direct them over to the web, give them the one-time download and install of a Skype meetings app and allow them to join from there. If I'm on a mobile device, for example, an iOS device, when I first launch the Skype for Business application after having been upgraded to Microsoft Teams, I'll see a screen similar to this, again, indicating that I am now using Microsoft Teams with a nice go to Teams button. But I also have the option, much like we saw on the desktop side, to start the Skype for Business application in the optimized meetings mode. Here you see a screenshot of the optimized meeting mode, again, similar to what we saw on the desktop side, where I can see my upcoming meetings, as well as be able to see my recent conversation history. If I were to click on the 
calendar in the upper right, this would take me to the detailed view of my meetings, again, allowing me to see all the meetings that I have for the day, including both Skype for Business as well as Microsoft Teams meetings. You can see the same thing from within your Teams application as well if you happen to launch the Teams app um, and move to the calendar pivot. Now, from either of these views, I can simply click join, one tap join and away we go. You know, this works the same from Outlook meeting invites or whatever mail client you're using as well. I've omitted that uh, off the slide just for, uh, for space purposes, but you will have the one tap join option available to you even on mobile. So if I were to tap either from my Skype client or from my Teams application, the join button, this is a Skype for business meeting, I will be joined straight into that particular meeting utilizing the Skype for Business mobile app. Now, the advantage here, I am actually connected to the Skype for Business meeting as my authenticated user because I did in fact launch the Skype app, I signed into it, and I'm using this optimized meetings mode version of the client. So now it's just business as usual for me inside of the Skype for Business meeting on my mobile application. If I tap the chat icon in the upper right, this will allow me to see and participate in the chat conversations that are happening within this Skype for Business meeting. Again, same as we had done prior to the upgrade happening. When my meeting is finished, you'll notice that I get redirected back into the optimized version, the meeting mode version of the Skype mobile application, and I actually can see my meeting chat history available in this case, under my recent pivot. Now, during our upgrade from Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams, we may find ourselves in a situation where we have users utilizing the Teams client that are attempting to communicate with users that are utilizing the Skype for Business client. By definition, this is what we call interoperability or interop for short. And effectively, it allows a user that is using Teams to be able to chat and call a user that is utilizing Skype for Business and vice versa. Now, we will give some visual indicators to let the users know that they are in an interop experience. And that's important because there are some fundamental differences in the way the interop experience works. So let's take an example here. The screenshot that I'm showing is a, a screenshot from a user named Adele. And she is current currently utilizing Teams. Uh, she only has the capability to use Teams for calling and chat. She doesn't have Skype for Business. Um, and she is attempting to chat with Alan DeYoung. And Alan, in this case, only has his Skype for Business client. Alan hasn't yet been provisioned or enabled uh, for Teams. So we have a situation where interoperability will come into play because Alan and Adele would like to be able to chat with each other. Now, looking at Adele's Teams client here, you can actually see uh, some visual indicators that give us clues that we're within an interop conversation. First and foremost, if we look at the top here, we get a, a text indicator that lets Adele know, okay, you're chatting with Alan, and this person is currently using Skype for Business. As such, some Microsoft Teams features won't be available. Uh, which features would that be? <laughs> well, if you take a look down here at the bottom, I've actually highlighted the chat window uh, or the chat uh, area where I can type a new message. And what you may notice if you're familiar with utilizing Teams is that there's nothing below, no, no uh, messaging extensions, compose extensions, uh, no ability to do emojis or giphys or stickers or file transfer or any of that. And that's because when we're doing interop uh, from a chat perspective, it is just basic chat, one-to-one -one chat uh, with plain text. So that's one of the first indicators that uh, we have a little bit of a different experience from the Teams side of the house. If we look at this from Alan's perspective and we bring up Alan's Skype for Business client, right here you can see Alan is chatting back and forth to Adele. And you'll notice that Alan gets a visual clue as well, visual indicator, letting him know that Adele is not utilizing Skype for Business. And that should be an, a visual indicator and aligned to your adoption strategies that let the user know uh, there's going to be a slight difference in experience now uh, because I am now chatting with a person that is not utilizing Skype for Business. Now, in addition to doing chat, 
from an interop perspective, we also have the capability of doing a one-to-one -one or a peer-to-peer -peer call, and that could be an audio call or an audio video call. Uh, same as we saw before, we are going to get some visual indicators in the client. So as you can see here, this is a screenshot of Adele's Teams client. Again, she is a Teams only user. She has uh, now established an audio call with Alan. Alan is using Skype for Business and is indicated properly here uh, in the client that Alan is using Skype for Business. So there are some Teams features that won't be available. And if you look down at the bottom of this screenshot, the little U bar that we have, you'll notice that we don't actually have the um, screen share option available. So if I fire up a little laser pointer here, we've got right here this option normally would be for sharing a screen. That one's currently not available. Uh, we are working to light up that particular feature to allow us to initiate a screen share from Teams to Skype, uh, but we haven't quite finished that work yet. It is something that we are looking to turn out uh, within this calendar year uh, 2019. But because we have this peer-to-peer uh, -peer call established, if we look at it from the Skype for Business side, you'll see that Alan's Skype for Business client has that same um, informational banner that we saw when we were looking at chat. Uh, letting Alan know that Adele is not using Skype for Business, and if there is a richer experience that's involved, perhaps they could switch to Teams if that's an option, or they could start a Skype meeting. Now, we did mention in the last slide that it wasn't possible to start a desktop share from Teams over to Skype for Business, uh, but it is possible to initiate desktop sharing from Skype for Business to Teams. Uh, and this is done, as you can see on the screenshot here, this is a simple chat conversation that Alan is having with Adele. Alan is our uh, Skype for Business user. Adele is our team's only user. And you can see here as part of this chat, uh, Adele is asking Alan uh, if he could share out his desktop again to you know, walk them through the, the portal uh, uh, that he was uh, taking her through a little earlier. Uh, he obliges, says sure, and clicks on his little screen share and he's met with the dialogue that indicates he can click here to start a meeting to share the screen with the Teams user. Upon clicking the link to start a meeting, uh, Alan is going to automatically be placed into a Skype for Business meeting, as you can see by the screenshot here. Uh, this is all transparent to Alan. His client just simply uh, automatically builds the meeting uh, and then sends the meeting coordinates over the chat channel to the Teams user which is Adele in this case. Now in Adele's Teams client, here's a little snippet of her chat conversation. Uh, and you can see right here that she's received the chat information. I would like to share my screen. Please click on this link to join the Skype meeting. Uh, this is the meeting that was automatically established when Alan started to share his desktop. And now Adele can simply click on this link uh, automatically launch her Skype for Business client uh, and take her into the meeting like we see here. And this would be the final uh, destination that has this Skype meeting that includes both Adele and Alan. And this is a full Skype for Business meeting. So Alan can now continue to share his desktop here as was requested earlier. Uh, they can also fire up the chat and be able to have their normal chat conversation within this Skype for Business meeting uh, just as one would expect. To recap the key learnings that we had from this training, Teams is the hub for teamwork within Office 365. In the context of the upgrade, Teams is much more than a technical migration. There's also a people change aspect that is critical to the upgrade process. The Teams only mode refers to the experience of a user that has been upgraded from Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams. And meetings are always joined with their respective clients. So a Teams meeting will be joined with a Teams client and a Skype for Business meeting will be joined with a Skype for Business client. Be sure to check out the other trainings that are part of this series of the Skype to Teams upgrade. Thank you for attending this session.